Imagine it's 2020 and life is good. You just graduated college with zero years of experience and in technical interviews, they're asking you to reverse an array in linear time or to solve three sum, but you've already practiced these questions over a hundred times on Leak Code. You go in blind and ask the community if you should take your $300,000 Facebook offer with a $100,000 sign on bonus or go to Stripe where you hear the food is better. You dream of being worth a million dollars in just a few years. Recruiting in 2020 was like playing life on easy mode. Every company under the sun was hiring and there weren't that many software engineers. So it honestly was wasn't that hard to get a high paying tech job. But those good old days are over and just like Andy Bernard- I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them because I would have done things differently. The overall market has shifted to becoming much more senior heavy. And I can vouch for this firsthand as someone who's recruited for most of last year, three months in the spring and then three months in the fall. At the senior and staff plus levels, compensation is just about where it always was. And for some industries like AI, even higher than usual. I read somewhere that engineers at OpenAI can make over a million dollars a year, which is crazy. So today I wanna to talk about the state of the software engineering market. Why is it the way it is? And then more importantly, what are we gonna do about it? How can you remain competitive and stand out in an increasingly competitive market? If you don't know who I am, hi, my name is Numan. I graduated college in 2020 and then joined a FinTech startup in San Francisco called Bolt. I was there for three years before I got laid off, which puts me at just three years of experience, much less than the five to seven years of experience most software engineering jobs today require. So trust me, I have felt this pain. How the turntables and I'm here to tell you how to overcome it. This video is the first in a multi-part series documenting my entire recruiting experience. Part one, this video explains why it's so hard to get a tech job right now. Part two walks you through every single interview question I ever got because yes, I documented everything. And then part three, TBD, if I get a job, pray for me, then we'll also talk about that. Now, I'm not alone. Many people in the industry have been feeling this sentiment, including Software Engineering Diaries who posted this video just a couple months back. Let's start off by talking about why this is happening. Why is the market so biased towards seniority? Well, let's go to LinkedIn. Right now, if you search for entry-level software engineering jobs, you'll be hard-pressed to find anything. Even listings that don't have the word staff or senior require three to five years of experience and sometimes even graduate level degrees like masters or PhDs. In fact, I can't remember the last time I saw the word new grad anywhere. The lowest title I've seen is software engineering too, which still means a mid-level software engineer with about three years of experience. And this makes sense because a lot of my junior engineer friends are having so much trouble even getting interviews. If we think about software engineers more broadly as a pyramid, then we have the more junior inexperienced engineers at the very bottom and they make the bulk of this pyramid. Then we have some mid-level engineers, then the senior staff, and then the god tier engineers at the very top. So this is the supply. To get a rough idea of demand, we can follow the general US economy. And that usually means looking at an index fund like the S&P 500, which tracks the 500 largest companies. And as you can see from 2020 to 2022, we saw a bull run like we've never seen before. It was COVID, people were home, spending more money online and software businesses were booming. Inflation was low and money was cheap. So in such an economy, companies adopt a growth at all cost mentality. And the fastest way to show growth is to build more products and invest in new revenue streams, which means you hire, you hire a ton and you don't care about years of experience. You just need manpower. You already have some tenured engineers, you have a roadmap. So all you need is all hands on deck writing code. So from 2020 to 2022, it was reasonably easy to get a high paying tech job. But then COVID-19 hit and companies started decreasing the perks and benefits they offered. There was no in-person work anymore, so no free food. You couldn't really go anywhere, so no happy hours and events. And this is important because it started a trend of cost cutting. Because when you lower costs, you instantly see a higher profit because profit is just revenue minus cost. And that means analysts on Wall Street start looking more favorably at your company, which means the stock price goes up. Now I'm simplifying a lot, but hopefully you get the gist. So then what happens in 2022? Well, COVID starts ending and the world basically goes back to normal, but not the good old days because we enter a recession since inflation is at an all time high. So companies scale back hiring, sometimes even freezing it entirely and start laying people off. And the tech industry comes to a halt. And who do they lay off? Well, it's not the God tier super senior engineers. It's a lot of the one to five years of experience, the junior to senior folks. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of super senior engineers are also let go, but oftentimes because they're overcompensated for their market value, maybe there's title inflation or their business line is no longer necessary, which means they just get unlucky. So let's go back to the pyramid, the supply. It's no longer balanced. It's now bloated at the bottom with a lot more mid to senior junior folks on the market looking for jobs. What I'm trying to say is that there's an unsustainable amount of more inexperienced engineers when the industry really biases towards expertise. Now we fast forward to late 2022 and the economy is recovering. Companies start hiring again, but sparingly. 
There are a few job openings, but they're biased towards senior engineers, which makes sense because one senior engineer can basically do the work of two to three junior engineers. So even though they command a higher salary, it's still cheaper to get one versus three engineers and salaries are down anyway. So if there's any time to get senior engineers, it's right now. Senior engineers need less onboarding. They have more experience, they can lead teams, and even better, they can mentor existing junior engineers so they too one day can become senior. So if it wasn't already clear, senior engineers are way more valuable to a company than any amount of junior engineers. And that's the reason companies like Netflix for a long time would only hire senior engineers. They're difficult to replace, they build more things, and they make the company more money. And because I love analogies, if you think of the tech industry like a Costco, they break even or lose money on their junior engineers and they make their money on their senior engineers. So on a rational level, this makes sense. But just like you, I'm still angry because when I apply to jobs, I just don't get interviews. And even if I do, I'm competing with people with more years of experience, which means they'll do better on system design interviews and they have bigger projects that they've led. So they just seem more competent. But let's say for a second, my destiny is in my control. I brush up on my skills. I do a bunch of practice and I crush every single interview. Well, I'll still get email rejections like this, where they'll basically say, Hey, you did a great job, but we ended up going with someone with more relevant years of experience. I mean, if I was the company, I would do the same thing. Why take the dude with three years of experience? when you can get the dude with five to seven and pay them basically the same amount. So by now, hopefully I've proven to you that this trend does indeed exist and it's extremely frustrating. So the question is, what are we gonna do about it? Keep watching because I'm gonna tell you. Secret number one, act like a senior engineer. Let's be honest, no one really knows what they're doing. We're all just trying to figure it out. A senior engineer is just better about it. They act like they know what they're doing even when they don't. And if you remember nothing, then remember this. Fake it till you make it. If you're already employed and want to protect yourself from future layoffs or these general market conditions, then you need to start specializing. Really understand your project and area of expertise deeply and become a subject matter expert. This is going to require hard work, but nothing in life comes easy. And if you want to keep earning the big bucks, then you're going to have to start doing this. Read and write more code, ask teams probing questions, and become the person people go to to get their questions answered. So when there's a new question or issue, don't go find the right person, become that right person. Do the job and actually own it. And and then take it to the finish line and make sure it's successful. This means you'll have to dive into the logs, read and review more PRs and become an owner because companies cannot let go of people who are indispensable. You have to become a person who either knows all the answers or knows how to get them and then goes and gets them. And whenever you're not sure if you're doing enough or how you're being perceived, just put yourself in your manager's shoes. Who would they want? Well, it's obviously someone who needs little direction, is a team player and just gets things done. Secret two build. It's much easier to build something when you're already working somewhere. Just keep making progress on your projects, suggest areas of improvement, and then quietly improve the code base. But what if you're not working right now? You were recently laid off or just graduated college. You might think there's no way to build and to show off your skills, but that's where you're wrong. Stop watching those video tutorials and then cloning the repo and just hitting run and then feeling proud of yourself. Let's be honest, you didn't do anything. And yes, a lot of software engineering is copy pasting and looking up answers on Google, but it's still different. Pick something you've always wanted to build and then just go build it for fun. It's the age of AI. If you need any inspiration, then just go look at the thousands of AI projects out there. Pick some LLM model or the ChatGPT API and then go crazy. Worst case, you just improve your skills and get better. Best case, your app starts making money and you don't even need to keep looking for a job. Win, win, win. Secret number three, be a people person. In a market like this, you get hired by knowing the right people. Or when a hiring manager thinks, hmm, who'd be a good software engineer for this job? They think of you. It's a black box out there, and applying online is like playing the slot machines, mostly just luck. To truly control your destiny, you have to get out there and make a name for yourself. So cold DM venture capitalists and engineering managers on LinkedIn. Hit up your friends for referrals and show up to fireside chats and other in-person events. So while everyone else is busy clicking some buttons on an online form, you're out there meeting the decision makers. We're all so well connected. Most of us are just afraid to leverage our existing community to help us get to where we want to be. Stop being scared. So in summary, if you do these three things, if you act like a senior engineer, if you build more things and you become a people person, well, then you'll be unstoppable. And there's not a single doubt in my mind that you won't be able to get that dream job in just a couple of months. The market is tough, yes, but it's not if you'll get a job, it's when. Now, the best way to learn software engineering doesn't take thousands of dollars or years of years of schooling. It's actually free and easy through Brilliant, the best way to learn math and computer science interactively. The platform is fun and interactive with thousands of lessons from the basics to advanced topics and new lessons are added every single month. Choose from a variety of topics like AI, neural networks, and programming. Whatever your skill level, Brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you progress at your own pace. You take a quick quiz when you join and you'll be matched with content that fits your interest and skill level. For example, the new thinking in code course gets you designing simple programs to solve real world problems right away. 
from map app navigation to writing a program that automatically responds to work messages. To try everything Brilliant has to offer completely free for a full 30 days, check out my special link in the description. And hurry, because the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.